Unreliable RAM can cause a multitude of problems. Corrupted data, crashes, and unexplained behavior. Bad RAM is one of the most frustrating computer problems to have as symptoms, as they are often random and hard to pin down. Memtest 86 can help diagnose faulty RAM, or rule it out as a cause of system instability. In today's video, we are going to cover Symptoms of memory errors Testing with Memtest 86 Analyze Memtest 86 results and fixing memory errors. For more information on how to download, install, and run Memtest 86, please see our previous video linked below. Symptoms of memory errors and common courses. To get started, it is best if we understand how to identify memory error symptoms and how these errors commonly manifest in our system. Common symptoms that point to memory errors include data corruption, blue screen of death, application crashes, and system lockups or freezes. Where memory issues become tricky is that these symptoms also overlap with other types of hardware failure and software bugs, which often mean it can be difficult to narrow down the root cause. Even when memory errors are the cause of instability, the faults may appear to be intermittent or random. Memory manufacturers generally test the sticks before they are sold, so any serious errors are normally detected before sale. But some memory faults will only occur in certain or particular configuration settings, and this type are more common in the field. These include changes in operating temperature, single channel or dual channel mode, timings, clock speed, and voltage settings in BIOS. To further complicate things, some errors could be considered soft errors, where a signal is wrong. While this may cause an error, there is no implication that the system is any less reliable. An example of a soft error is a single event upset from cosmic rays. How to test your memory and more specifically, how Memtest 86 tests your RAM for faults. So based on the symptoms, you think you may be experiencing memory errors. So how do you test your system's memory? If you are after a built-in, although limited memory test, you can run the Windows Memory Diagnostic tool. However, for a more comprehensive test, we encourage you to run Memtest 86. Memory chips consist of a large array of tightly packed memory cells, one for each bit of data, a one or zero in the form of an electrical charge arranged in a grid, each element of the grid having a numerical address. Memory tests work by writing and reading data to and from the RAM and checking that the data read matches the data written. If there is not a match, this indicates a fault of some sort. The most common fault is a small number of memory cells going bad, incorrectly flipping bits between a 1 and a 0. So how does Memtest 86 test RAM? Computer motherboards contain some built-in software called BIOS. This is the basic software that runs a machine as it is initially powered on. The current version of BIOS is known as UEFI BIOS. This BIOS maintains a memory map of available free memory and used memory. UEFI provides a function called getMemoryMap to get the list. This map provides a list of available memory ranges that can be tested by Memtest 86. Other RAM, generally 1 to 5% of the total, is permanently reserved for use by other hardware and cannot be tested. Memtest 86 then executes a series of tests to check for errors in the available memory ranges. These test sections consist of a combination of test algorithm, data pattern, and cache setting. The execution order for these tests were arranged so that the errors will be detected as rapidly as possible. Memtest 86 does this without an operating system installed to maximize the amount of RAM that is available. It does this by booting directly from your system's BIOS. Where the BIOS supports it, all CPU cores are used simultaneously to test memory ranges to speed up testing. Test time. 
four passes are done by Memtest 86 by default. Pass 1 was designed to be quicker than subsequent passes. Total test time depends on the CPU speed and the amount of RAM to be tested, but can vary from 20 minutes to several hours. What type of errors might I expect and what do they look like? The most common RAM failure is a small number of addresses having bit flips. Sometimes bits are stuck low, other times they are stuck high, sometimes it is more random. They may appear as like in this screenshot. But other less common errors are incorrect timings, incorrect voltages, BIOS bugs and CPU faults. All of these errors generally result in a larger number of errors covering more addresses. Looking at the table included here, you can see a range of fault types, expected bits in errors, and the address range and CPU cores that are affected. It is important to note that this is just a generalization, as there are lots of exceptions. Let's break down some of the reports from Memtest 86. At the end of a test, a summary of the test results are displayed. The following fields cover the lowest addressed where an error has been reported, the highest addressed where an error has been reported, a mask of all bits that have been in error in hexadecimal, total bits in error for all error instances and the min, max and average bit in error for each individual occurrence, the maximum of contiguous addresses with errors, list of CPU cores that detected memory errors, the number of errors that have been corrected, uncorrected by ECC hardware. At the end of testing, you will receive an error report in HTML format. This will cover the following fields. The address where the error was detected, the expected value, the actual value, the bits in error and the CPU in use. A sample of a common error report can be seen here. This highlights that the errors happened on test 8, random number sequence, the CPU in use, the address where the error was detected and the expected and actual result. You might be wondering why addresses and data values are displayed in hexadecimal and not decimal. Hexadecimal numerals are widely used by computer system designers and programmers because they provide a human-friendly representation of binary coded values. Each hexadecimal digit represents exactly four bits, half a byte. This makes patterns in bit flips easier to spot. Many of these minor faults can be fixed or at least hidden by using ECC RAM. Most consumer systems don't support this type of RAM. For the most part, this has been done to improve profitability at the expense of reliability. On this point, we agreed with Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, when he described the policy as misguided and backwards. It is important to note the special case of errors in test 13. Some errors might be acceptable in test 13, the row hammer test. The hammer test is designed to detect RAM modules that are susceptible to disturbance errors caused by charge leakage. In simple terms, susceptible RAM modules can be subjected to disturbance errors when repeatedly accessing addresses in the same memory bank, but different rows in short periods of time. Errors occur when the repeated access causes charge loss in a memory cell before the cell contents can be refreshed at the next DRAM refresh interval. After testing, the user may see a warning indicating that the RAM may be vulnerable to high frequency row hammer bit flips. This warning appears when errors are detected during the first pass, but no errors are detected during the second pass. The errors detected in test 13, although only exposed in extreme memory access cases, are most certainly real errors. During typical home PC usage, for example, web browsing and word processing, it is less likely that the memory usage pattern will fall into the extreme case that will make it vulnerable to disturbance errors. So depending on your usage, no action may be required. So Memtest86 reported an error. What should you do? Firstly, it is best to try and determine which RAM module is failing. 
Once a memory error has been detected, determining the failing module is not a clear-cut procedure. Different CPUs map memory addresses to physical memory sticks in different ways. Features like dual-channel RAM with interleaving, channel hashing, and NUMA make the mapping of addresses to modules, banks and rows very difficult. With the large number of CPUs and motherboard vendors, and possible combinations of memory slots, it would be difficult, if not impossible, to assemble complete information about how a particular error would map to a failing memory module. However, there are steps that may be taken to determine the failing module. Here are some techniques that you may wish to use. 1. Removing modules. This is the simplest method for isolating a failing module, but may only be employed when one or more modules can be removed from the system. By selectively removing modules from the system and then running the test, you will be able to determine the bad module. Be sure to note exactly which modules are in the system when the test passes and when the test fails. 2. Rotating modules. If you have three or more modules in the system, you can try rotating modules. Change the location of two of the modules at a time. For example, putting module 1 into slot 2 and then module 2 into slot 1. Run the test and if either of the failing bit or address changes, then you know that the failing module is one of the modules that has just been moved. By using several combinations of module movement, you should be able to determine which module is failing. 3. Replacing modules. If you are unable to use either of the previous techniques, then you are left to selective replacement of modules to find the failure. Memtest 86 version 10 now supports decoding and identification of the DIM module on which a particular error occurred. This can be used to more efficiently narrow down potentially bad RAM modules. This is done by decoding the memory address with an error and locating the physical hardware that corresponds to that address. The possibility of multiple channels, multiple ranks, interleaving and hashing of addresses makes this process complex. The Memtest 86 Site Edition supports decoding of the individual memory chip in which the error occurred. The DRAM chip naming U0 to U7 can be adjusted with config parameter chip map. In the case for this example, B2 refers to the channel and slot where the faulty module is located. U3 refers to the third chip on the RAM module. A graphical UI summary report is available on test completion, and a per DIM error count table can be accessed in the HTML report. Currently, Memtest 86 version 10 only supports DIM and chip decoding for select motherboards, memory and CPU architectures. You can see a list of the currently supported hardware on the right. Please check the Memtest 86 website for an updated list. If you only have one RAM stick or it is soldered into the motherboard, there are a range of options you can try. Depending on what is causing the memory errors, we suggest the following options. If you only have one RAM stick, it is recommended that you replace the stick. Most RAM manufacturers offer a lifetime warranty, and RAM is often sold as matching pairs of sticks, so if you are requesting warranty replacement, you might want to request both sticks are replaced. Set default or conservative RAM timings, increase RAM voltages, apply BIOS updates to fix incompatibility issues. If the error is in a small address range, blacklist this address range. Ensure that you have your RAM sticks in optimal slots. If you aren't sure, consult your motherboard manual. And where possible, use RAM on the qualified vendor lists for your motherboard and turn off XMP Profile BIOS. XMP, short for Extreme Memory Profile, is originally an Intel technology that allows you to change multiple memory settings by simply selecting a different profile, taking advantage of a higher than standard memory speed. 
your BIOS uses a small chip on RAM modules called an SPD, Serial Presence Detect chip, to set memory timing and frequency properly. XMP is an extension of SPD which provides higher frequencies and tighter timings for your memory to run at. One way to try and minimize errors is to turn off the selected XMP or DOCP direct overclock profile in the case for AMD. While detecting and deciphering memory errors can be tricky, we hope that this video has clarified some of the common issues and provided a simple guide on how to address these. If you are experiencing some of the symptoms of memory failure, Memtest 86 is available as a free download, so why not try to diagnose the issue today? For more information and to purchase Memtest 86 Pro, visit memtest86.com.